Welcome to Feel the Heat, a Five Reasons Sports Network Miami Heat podcast. Hosted by Alana Tahauer and Michael Christian, this is your one-stop listen for all things Miami Heat culture, past, present, and future, on and off the court. What's up, y'all? And welcome to episode 11 of Feel the Heat. I got it right this time. Last time I thought we were in episode nine, but we were on episode 10. So numbers are fun. I am going to start off this pod tonight by telling you that Michael just said our podcast puts him to sleep. Michael, do you want to defend yourself? Uh, It's really only when I talk. Something about my voice is just very soothing. Right. Maybe I should be hosting an NPR podcast. Welcome to Feel the Heat. I am Michael Christian. Right. I feel like that would work. I feel like that would go over pretty well. Or you could like record a bedtime story podcast for little kids. Have you ever heard? You don't want to know something? One of my favorite bedtime stories is actually an audiobook that was done by Samuel L. Jackson. Okay. Oh, no way. Yeah. Do you want to know what the title of the book was? Absolutely. Go the fuck to sleep. That was Are the title. Are you serious? Of the book. I can't tell if you're baiting me. Hundred percent. Look it up on YouTube. Okay, now it was I'm a excited. book, and then they did an audio book for it, and Samuel L. Jackson did it, and it was perfect. Okay, well, maybe that should be your next venture when you get sick of me on this podcast. So tomorrow, and yeah, I set myself up for that one. Speaking of getting sick of things, though, Joel and Bead look sick and tired on that court tonight. But let me just say. That Hawks win energized me. Tell me your thoughts on this game, Michael. Uh, I actually did catch the game, which is very exciting for me. Right, It's a good time when I get to watch these other basketball teams. And I'm like, I have no actual like care for this game outside of just basketball. Do you prefer that though? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. Like these games will never really disappoint me and make me depressed the way that the heat sometimes can make me. But I'll also never get really ecstatic about it like the heat can make me. So it's it's fun watching. I enjoy it. Um, I think what was fun for me was watching the Sixers lose because, you know, screw the Sixers. I haven't liked them a good time. Basically ever. Joel Embiid going four for 20. Just chef's kiss. Joel looked like trash tonight. And I don't know if he's injured. I don't know if he's tired. I don't know if he's frustrated, but he was looking a hot ass mess. He was looking awful, which is fun for me because, again, the Sixers just think they're really great. The Sixers Mm -hmm. are like that regular season team. It's like, cool, you had a good regular season. You're not really going to go anywhere, right? But at this point, the East is a little up for grabs, basically all because of the Brooklyn injury situations. But it's good seeing the Sixers lose, honestly. It It makes me just so happy inside. Doc Rivers, you Celtic blooded loser, get out of here, right? Joel Embiid, you suck. Now, if you wanted to come to Miami, I'd take him. Ben Simmons, woof, overrated. Michael, 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 Michael. Let's what? rewind for a second. You would want Joel Embiid on the Miami Heat. I mean, I would. This okay. might be your hottest and worst take yet, and you've had so many. Wow, on this really? podcast this one? alone. This, this one. is pretty bad. So I'm going to need is... you to explain. Okay. So who would you rather have on the team? And I'm going to ask you before I give my thoughts. Would you rather have Joel Embiid on the Miami Heat or Kawhi Leonard? Kawhi Leonard. There's not even a second hesitation. Uh, if you had your way, you would prefer neither of the two. Yes. Mm, but my take is atrocious for wanting an all-star center. Well, my not wanting Kawhi is because I want others such as Dame. It's not a flat out no to Kawhi. I don't think he'd be a great fit. I also don't think he's leaving out LA, but for you to say that you want, you actively no, 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 no. I said I'd take, I said I'd take him and that if he was on the heat, I would root for him. But I'm, I'm not going to go out of my way. Flashback to when you said that the Heat should basically take anybody at this point. Remember that? I think it happened on Clutch Corner. I still stand by that take. And if you watch this last season, I think it proved it right. 
I don't know. You know, this episode is not going where I thought it was going to go. So I, I feel like I need to buckle in. Um, you you teed all of this up. I, I did not start any of this line of questioning. We're not even following the rundown. I'm trying hard and your takes are just taking us to wild places. Joel and Beach says he wants to join the Miami Heat because he wants to rejoin Jimmy Butler. Would you trade for Joel Embiid? Yes or no? I don't even pick up the phone for that phone call. Wow, really? I look, and here's the thing I will tell you, I prefer Bam just because I like Bam's work ethic. I'm not saying Bam is a better player because I don't think that, right? I'm not stupid, but I think Bam can be a, close to what Joel Embiid is now. And I would say Joel Embiid is at his best right now. But if you're talking about maximizing the times, you're talking about pairing Jimmy with somebody now that can help him win. Injury problems are concerned with Embiid, but all I'm saying is if he said he wanted to be down in Miami, you got to at least pick up the phone. I'm looking at that caller ID. I'm laughing. I'm cheersing some rosé with Pat Riley, and I'm not even picking up that phone. That That's what happens if Joel Embiid calls. I mean... Honestly, his the chances of Joel Embiid coming down to Miami are slim to none. But the chances of you cheersing a rosé with Pat Riley is purely none. It's not slim Absolutely to none. Absolutely not. None. I am manifesting that shit, Michael. You think you will beat Pat Riley? Absolutely. Okay. I, I'd put a thousand bucks on it right now. You, you can actually note the date and, and time and that this nope. podcast is nope. being recorded. You said right cheers now. a rosé. It is Monday. June 14th, 2021, 9.39 p.m. Central Time. Huh. Nobody talks in Central Time. Except for all the people that live in Central Time. Even on their TV sets, it says it in Eastern Time first. Anyway. If we'd like to stick on the heat, I would like to talk about the suns because nothing is making me happier these days. I know you're not as big as a f- supporter as you should. Has has that changed yet? Excuse? Uh, Excuse? Did you listen to our last podcast? Michael, Michael also, here's the thing about Michael. He says that it, this pod puts him to sleep, but then he doesn't <laughs> listen back to our pod. So I can't really tell what's going on here. So anything I tell you now is just free reign to be on the podcast. Did you say off the record before we started? Because I remember someone <laughs> throwing some okay. shade last I just, week. I just want to be sure that that's exactly what's going on here. What are we talking about? The Suns? Look, I'm happy for Jay Crowder. I am happy for James Jones. Okay, James Heat Jones. legend, Former Miami Heat player. Former University of Miami basketball player as well, right? That's Double right. To, to enjoy his success. I'm fine with the Suns. I don't have a problem with them. I was just rooting for the Nets because I like Bruce Brown and Tyler Johnson a little bit more. I I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think there's a lot wrong with that, starting with the fact that your love for TJ is going to cloud your vision over the magnificent basketball that the Suns are playing. I honestly could watch the Suns play for on, on loop for like 10 hours and not get sick of it. The Suns are playing great. I'm not taking that away from them. I'm just saying my personal preference is Bruce Brown, who I actually saw play at the University of Miami. Tyler Johnson, who I actually watched a lot of his heat career. I mean, his whole heat career was a little short. Probably should have gotten rid of him sooner, but it is what it is. I don't know. I'm just I'm just rooting for the Nets. Why is one wrong and one's not? Is because the Suns are this scrappy underdog team. No one thought they could be here. Good for them. So happy for you, right? I just now think it's interesting. Salty. No, I just think it's interesting that you're rooting for them so much, considering you of all people have called this an asterisk season. So would this championship really mean anything to the Suns with that big fat asterisk next to it? I just enjoy watching them play. I'm not even rooting for them in terms of getting a title. It'd be great if they could do that because I think they deserve it. But for me, this team is the most fun that I've had watching basketball all season. Whoa. All season? No, nah, I'll season. take, listen, those Warriors games, I'll take what Steph was doing in a heartbeat. What Steph was doing was phenomenal. Devin Booker's playing great. Chris Paul's playing great. Love Jay Crowder's grittiness. Steph and Curry this season put on an absolute clinic the way he was. I don't disagree. 30 plus with the entire team. But that's team one guy. 
the camaraderie on the Suns team right now, like even off the court, it's just bar none. Like I, I'm all in on this organization. I wish that this is what the Heat could have been this year, but they weren't. So I'm going to enjoy the shit out of Phoenix Suns. Look, good for that. I, I, I'm, I don't have a problem with the Suns. If the Suns win it all, that's awesome. I'll be happy for Jay. I'll be happy for James. I just personally am rooting for the Nets. Nah, I, I don't know how much further the Nets are going to go, though, considering they've already lost Harden. And now it looks like they've lost Kyrie. Well, both just got announced that they will not be playing in game five. So how do you feel? Uh, that's a big fat whelpers. Mm -hmm. uh, that sucks. That is a team. Look, honestly, there are a few things I hate more than a team losing their stars in the playoffs. I don't care what the team is. I remember when the Heat, were in those big three days and our issues were with multiple teams. But I remember Derek Rose going down in the first round after the first game because he was in there much too long. I Thanks, too Tibbs. remember that as a that look, honestly, that sucks as a competitor, as of even as a fan, that sucks because you want to beat the teams at their best. You don't want anybody to, to say something like, oh, well, you know, we were losing our best player. So not like it mattered. I mean, and this is even before what happened to the Heat last season, which was gut-wrenching. I mean, the performances they had to put on just to keep the games close because they mm -hmm. lost so many guys, it sucks watching the players go down like that. Even though I was rooting for the Nets, even if you're not rooting for the Nets, you want to see teams at full strength. Unfortunately, we're not seeing that, and the Bucks are taking advantage of that and mounting a comeback. You seem to be very anti-Nets, though, but I'm sure you can agree with my sentiment. No, absolutely. Um, and honestly... Kyrie's ankle turn looked bad. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be a doctor and I'm not going to pretend to kind of know the ins and outs of that. Um, but the fact that, I mean, first of all, it looked bad when it happened, but the fact that he wouldn't let anyone even touch his ankle at first because he was in searing pain um, as he walked off, he kind of looked like he was grabbing his back a little bit too. So I don't really expect that he's going to be back anytime soon. Um, and I mean, I, I do hate to see it. I don't necessarily love this team. I don't like Katie. Um, it's hard for me to kind of root for a team that again, I feel like is just teaming up for a super team and taking the easy way out, but I would never want to see someone go down. Um, and honestly, I think Kyrie's a great player. I think he's fun to watch. I think, um, you know, the work ethic is there, so it, it sucks that it's happening to him. I will say I appreciate the fact that, you know, um, Steve Nash is not rushing Harden's return. I know a lot of people were concerned that without Kyrie out, they might kind of push Harden to go, but it's not worth it, in my opinion, to make that injury worse. Um, the question now is, though, do you think the Bucks are going to propel forward without Kyrie? If Kyrie and James don't come back in the series, I think the Bucks are going to take it. I think that's just too much. Which means that my Bucks and seven take may actually come true. Uh, hold up. Wait, are we saying that injuries are allowed to keep like, like I predicted the nets, but come on injuries like this. You can't be like, Oh, my prediction was serious? right. Oh, no. so every series prediction that anyone ever makes is barring injuries. Cause there's one, like a game at this point. A hundred percent, especially when it's players as important Michael, as James you're Harden just, and Kyrie you're Irving. Killing me tonight. I thought your Embiid take was bad, and now you're giving me this. Playoff predictions are inclusive of injuries. Oh, what? No. If y'all could see Michael's face right now, I just I. To me, whenever I see, okay, so here's the difference between you and I when we make predictions. When you make a prediction, you're like. If this team is going to win it, it'll be in this amount of games. My, nope, that if, was one prediction for this. I said bucks in seven. It was on Twitter. Yawn. Uh, to me, my like if or asterisk is always injury based. For example, right? If the Miami Heat started that series one game one and the next game Jimmy went down. I don't care what happened. I'm going to say the Bucks are probably going to win because the Heat don't have Jimmy. You can't think, just change your prediction based on an injury. Based on an injury? Your oh, prediction you is locked in. As soon as you say yeah. your prediction, it is locked and loaded. And you, you say regard, cannot So you're saying regardless of injury? Locked and loaded, Michael. Okay. So Giannis goes down. 
your prediction of Bucks and seven? I, I have to stick to Bucks and seven. I said it on the pod and I've tweeted it. You can't go changing your mind. Oh, I think you should. I think you can change your prediction if there's a major injury like that. That's not a prediction then. Then that's just basically reading trends at that point. What are we doing? Stock market trends? I I don't know. I'd be interested to see how many people are on your side about this. Uh, genuinely, because I feel like injuries are the one that everyone's always like, oh, okay, well, the injury happened, so it's a little different. But it's not even about that. It's that once you've made a prediction, that's it. Otherwise, you could just change it every game. You could be uh, like, oh, this uh, player chewed a piece of gum. My prediction has changed. I think if the Nets had stayed healthy and had both Kevin Durant and Kyrie, at least they would have won this series. And what did I say? I think I said five. Yeah. Right. I still think they would have won in five, but okay, maybe six. But now without Kyrie and Harden, I but then, I then can't you're making a new prediction. Here. Because it's changed. Because I the, can't believe what's happening right oh, now. This is weird. I think we need to move on to the next segment because I'm, I'm I tripping think we out do on this too. one. I would be, jan- you know what? Okay, we have a live stream. We'll do like a mid promo right in the middle of the show. We have Love a live that. stream coming up on Thursday. And we are hyping. At 8.30 p.m. Eastern, the correct time, okay? At 8.30 p.m. Eastern, I we're going to put this question out there and I... I want us to have a poll. I want us to do all this stuff. We'll pull the people on five reasons as well. To me, if you make a prediction and an injury happens, you should be allowed to change your prediction based on said injury, especially if it happens in the middle of the series. Your prediction is set in stone. It's like written in blood once you make it. Right. But if I put an if at the beginning, is it a different oh, that's kind different. of blood? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's real convenient. Isn't really, it really, really, really convenient? You know what? Okay. Talking about all these other teams very much gets us fighting. And I think we fight all the time, but when we're fighting about other teams too, I'm just kind of like, whatever you're wrong. And it doesn't even matter, but, but there are things we need to talk about concerning the heat specifically today. The news dropped of the 2021 all NBA defensive teams. First team, all NBA defensive team included Giannis. Rudy, Do- Rudy Gobert, Draymond Green, Drew Holiday, and Ben Simmons. Second team included Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Joel Embiid, Kawhi Leonard, and Matisse Thybul. I, I don't even know why, but whatever. Alana, thoughts? I am both surprised but happy that both Jimmy and Bam made it. Um, I was expecting Bam to be on there, but not necessarily Jimmy. I think they both definitely earned a spot. Um, I don't know how I feel about the rest. I'm kind of, you said Embiid was on second team, right? Yes. I'm a little bit surprised by that too. Um, Not to say that he necessarily deserved to be on first team, but usually I feel like he's a little higher up there. Um, Thigh ball makes no sense to me and I don't understand where it came from, but have you looked at all the other votes? Because looking at the list of players that receive votes just has me cracking up and kind of goes to show that these awards are, usually meaningless so i haven't done too much digging but i have it up on my screen right now so guards other guards have received votes mikhail bridges was actually playing fantastic defense Mm -hmm. as of late marcus smart hate him abhor the man lugans lugans dort i think that's i think i'm pronouncing it right i don't know pronounce his first name lugans lu oh i'm not even gonna try Michael will butcher that for the both of us. I just did like four times. Thanks for the backup. Okay. uh, Chris Paul is on here. That's uh, interesting. Paul George, uh, Alex, the bald man Caruso. Yeah. That one really threw me for a loop. Really? Not KCP? KCP too. But Alex Caruso seemed to have more votes. Other centers receiving votes included Clint Capella and Nerlens Noel. But all of those votes were basically taken immediately. So Rudy Gobert and Ben Simmons got all first team votes. Like there was no question. They Rudy got Gobert like a perfect score. Rudy Gobert is not a good basketball player. I don't know how many okay, different okay, ways okay. Whoa, 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 I can say this. Wait, 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 wait. Rudy Gobert is not what everybody hypes him up to be. He's but I think a it's a stretch player. to say he's not a good basketball player. I'm going to say it again. Rudy Gobert is not a good basketball player. Well, I, I think he's a good basketball player. I think he's overrated, but I think he's a good basketball player for sure. That's a, ooh, 
really two-time defensive player of the year. And you think he's not even good. Like not that he's not great. He's not even good. No. Is he mediocre or is he bad? He's mediocre. He's an average basketball player. He's an average basketball player. Hassan Whiteside, Rudy Gobert, which one's better? Neither. Wow, you really dodged that one, huh? Yeah, I tend to do that pretty well. I'm sure, listen, I'm sure Royal's listening to this right now and being like, Michael, you understand my problems. Love you, Royal. Alana just dodging all the questions to try to fit her agenda. Disgusting. Uh, I'm just trying to fit in with the rest of Heat Twitter, Michael. shots fired why they give you any sort of support i don't know you are just ruthless at them i love me for my honesty uh, i think the word honesty and love are probably two words that really don't fit in there in terms of the way he twitter feels about you michael thinks he's a wordsmith now everyone go read his cheesecake factory article complete with a chart in the middle excuse me data is important okay did you see how little that chart was in comparison? That I had is to not blow my fault that it didn't up. translate. Zoom my browser. It's not in. my fault that it doesn't translate oh, now you're onto just the gonna, website. Now you're going to throw it on the editor. Can Who I edit that for you? Nobody. Was it just, Ethan J. Skolnick? No, nobody. It just got put up on the site. I don't know, Michael. It seems like you're throwing shade at Ethan. but I'm definitely not. But I mean, I'm fine. I'm pretty sure he doesn't listen to this. So if we look at the NBA All-Defensive Second Team, Bam and Jimmy actually were the leading vote getters for the second team, right? They barely missed being first team behind Giannis. So Bam would be the one behind Giannis. Giannis received 135 points. Bam received 111. I agree with you in that I'm surprised. I'm happy for them. Good for them, right? I'm glad they're getting some recognition. They absolutely deserve recognition for their play. I'm just surprised because a lot of times it feels like these awards and these like, you know, like the all-star games, the MVP, defensive player of the year, all pro, all first team, defensive, whatever it is. It's so much dependent on how you perform during the season. Mm -hmm. And considering how up and down this season was for the Miami Heat, I would not have been surprised if they had both been left off the first and second defensive teams. They are fantastic players, and I think they deserve to be there. I just don't think that everybody else sees them as we do, or at least that's what I thought. And apparently... There's a much larger contingent of people that view Jimmy and Bam the way we as a fan base do. No, I agree. I think um, Miami tends to get overlooked with a lot of the awards. And I think obviously the worse that Miami does, the more overlooked they get. Um, But at the same time, there wasn't a lot to hang on to this season. Uh, And I think because of that, national media took a little bit more kind of stake in figuring out what was going on with the team. Um, And especially defensively. I mean, the Miami Heat, They've lost their identity a little bit, but through and through defense is kind of the heart and soul of the team. Um, And I think that because of that, Bam and Jimmy kind of got the flowers they deserved. Um, I obviously wish that these kinds of awards meant a little more in terms of, you know, who who gets votes um, and who can who can have a say in it. Uh, But I think they should feel good about the honor regardless. Yeah, no, I think they should feel good about it. I I just, I'll go back to what I've said before. And I I know I've said it on this show. I don't remember what episode I said it on. Personally, to me, awards don't mean all that much. Mm -hmm. Like, it's cool. I'm glad when the players get the recognition. It just feels like a lot of time, it's a very political thing. A very, Mm -hmm. like, who's the current favorite? Who do people like the most? And so I don't think that the Heat really are ever going to be that. I just I just don't think that's the way it is. Their play style, the way the team is set up, the way everything is, that's not the way they are, and that's not what they play for. They don't play. No, and I know we've, you know, we've talked about this on post game and clutch corner before. I don't think it's really the Heat's agenda to be marketing their players. I think at the end of the day, you know, they want to to win on the court and they want to succeed as an organization. I don't really think they they care about players notoriety and kind of the popularity popularity around the league um so you know i know some people were saying that they didn't really campaign really hard for bam but i just don't think that that's what the organization is ever going to do and i don't really think they should yeah i don't i don't think it's important enough like that shouldn't be your number one priority if that's your number one priority i think you should be at a different organization where they can Mm -hmm. do that for you but that's not the thing here here it's about winning and Unfortunately, that didn't happen much this last season, but I'm sure we'll see as this season comes up that there will be a lot of moves, a lot of transactions, a lot of things that will happen 
to help push this team closer to a championship. Now, Heat Twitter has obviously always been ablaze with names. Anytime anyone that's an all-star player says anything that could be remotely considered they're unhappy with their team, jersey swaps. There's just crazy amount of jersey swaps. The latest, uh, I don't, I don't want to say victim, but I feel like victim. But the latest victim of these jersey swaps, Luka Doncic. Mm-hmm. What do we think about that? I think it's impossible. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think it's fun to think about, I guess. But if fans are actually invested in the potential of this happening, they should probably look elsewhere. Um, I don't know what to think of the reports that came out. Obviously, Mark Cuban kind of doubled down and said all of it was BS. Um, Now, would he come out and say it wasn't? No. So he had to say something. The fact that he went so aggressively makes me think there might have been some miscommunication somewhere. But at the end of the day, I really just don't see it happening. Um, You know, I know people are talking about the fact that him and Goran are close. And listen, would I love Luca? Absolutely. Just imagine Goran mentoring Luca on this team, especially. But I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I think my thing with Luca is just more... A player like that does not come around basically ever, right? That is a franchise carrying player and you do everything in your power to make that player happy and do whatever it is they want. They are more likely to trade away every single Mm -hmm. other player on that roster than they are to trade Luka Doncic and not only trade them, but trade them for nothing. If Luca said trade Kristaps Porzingis and Tim Hardaway Jr., both of them for a singular second round draft pick, they would do it because Luca said so. That Mm -hmm. is just what his talent level dictates. That is just the way it goes. I don't think he would actually do that. I don't think Luca's a bad guy. That would be just a horrible star flexing move. But there's no shot that he forces his way out. And if he does force his way out, To then say, I want specifically to go to Miami, it's the same thing that we've talked about before with Kawhi, with Dame. They're so good. They're worth so much that the only way that he could get those players is if they specifically said, that is the only place I want to go. On top of that, it would be a whole circus juggling all the salary numbers and all the picks and everything you have to get going. And we've talked about this before, and we can be honest, Is Miami enticing? Sure. But is Miami as enticing as the rest of us think it is? Mm, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I will say, however, that I think the likelihood of Kawhi and or Dame coming is actually higher than Luca. I think Luca's maybe the most unrealistic people person, excuse me, that we've talked about on heat Twitter so far. Yeah. And the other one that's coming around and I think heat Twitter is I don't even want to say it's divided because it's pretty adamantly against this player, at least seemingly, is Kemba Walker. Uh, Which, you know, I'm not sure I understand the hatred for Kemba. I'm not saying that he would be someone I would necessarily chase, and I don't think I would pick him over a lot of the other available guys, but I feel like he's being slandered a little bit too much lately. I don't hate Kemba Walker. Obviously, I'm not a fan of the fact that he wears that disgusting green and white uniform. But if he's that trying to get out of that makes uniform, want to does his value yeah, I, rise in your eyes? I think Kemba Walker's a good player. I just don't know if Kemba Walker's really the player I want for the Miami Heat. If what I want is players that can do a little bit more on the basketball court in terms of both sides of the floor, mm-hmm. we know that's not really Kemba's strong suit. Yes, I think he lifts up our offense a really good amount. The injury history also isn't too promising. So you pair injury history with little to no defense at all times. I'm just not super excited about the possibility of Kimball Walker. I think there are better options out there. One other option that we'll probably be talked about much more this week, tease, tease, uh, that we will not get to that I think could fit better. I just, I don't know with Kemba, I don't see the reason to hate on him, but I also wouldn't give up much. Like I'll take him if it's really cheap, but outside of that, eh, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, I I will echo that. I don't think that he would necessarily be a good fit. I don't think that he's strong, obviously, defensively, and the injuries are definitely concerning. For me, I just think that people act like Kemba is kind of like dead and gone, and he's washed, and I just don't think that's the case. I think 
obviously outside of the injuries, he could have been like continuing to be near all-star level. Um, And I have said this time and time again, to me, it really matters the environment that players are in. There are guys who flourish in different systems. And just because they have one or two years that kind of, you know, don't necessarily fit their, their needs um, and don't rise to their potential doesn't mean that they are done for. Um, I think it just means that they need a new system and a new coach and new teammates. So To me, I don't know. The Kemba hate is a little bit strong. I don't necessarily want him in Miami, but I also recognize that I think he could be an asset elsewhere. He could be an asset elsewhere. And and currently, there is an asset elsewhere that has... It lit a flame, and then the flame kind of died, and then the flame totally got gaslit again in the the past weeks. Uh, That flame is the one of... Uh, Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade is now part of the ownership group with the Jazz. We have said we were going to talk about this. I think now's as good a time as ever to talk about it. Ooh, wait, hold on. Let's get a current score check. Ooh, Los Angeles Clippers up 41-20 on Dwayne Wade's Utah Jazz. Unfortunate. What Are we really calling it Dwayne Wade's Utah Jazz now? Is that Are you making this an official thing? Because I don't know if I can stomach that yet. I mean, that's what I called it because every time the Utah Jazz are on, all they do is show wherever Dwayne Wade is sitting. Like, I, they don't even care whoever the hell else is part of that ownership group. He is all that matters. And I will say, it is a little similar to, and I know you probably don't know too much about this, but Derek Jeter is part of the ownership group that bought the Miami Marlins. This. Right. But Derek Jeter, from a financial standpoint, wasn't really very important. From a pure power standpoint, it's really not all Derek Jeter, although he does have a really strong pull, but it's the fact that it's his name, right? It's mm-hmm. Derek Jeter, so that's who everyone talks about. So when the Marlins do something bad, it's Derek Jeter. When they do something good, it's Derek Jeter. And I'm not going to say that that's exactly what's going to happen with the Jazz, but there's so much media coverage around Dwayne Wade mm-hmm. that honestly it does feel like Dwayne Wade's Utah Jazz. And it's made a lot of Heat fans uncomfortable. I will just give a quick little thing about mine. I'll let you go on yours and then I'll diverge further. I don't care. That's just, I, I don't care. Good for him. Do what you got to do. But Alana, what, what were your thoughts? Oh, I care. I don't hold it against him and I completely understand that it's a business decision, but I care. Um, I am very curious if Miami ever talked to him about kind of, further roles down the line before he even retired. I don't know if they had conversations with him after his retirement. Um, To me, that matters a little bit more in terms of if there were any potentials, um, not necessarily only in ownership, but in any other positions there. Um, But yeah, it sucks. I mean, you don't really want to see Dwayne Wade, who basically Dwayne Wade is the Miami Heat. They're one and the same. And to have him go, and own part of another team. Um, You know, it's a little bit less hurtful that it's not necessarily a rival team. I mean, imagine if this was, I don't know, the Knicks or the Celtics. Um, But yeah, I I don't love it. Um, Again, I don't hold it against him and I understand it was a business move, but it's not fun to see. Let me, sorry. Uh, I'll rephrase what I said and the way I said it. To me, I don't care from the standpoint of, I don't feel any harsh feelings towards him at all. And I don't feel any harsh feelings towards the team at all from the standpoint of, I don't know exactly what the conversations were, but I'm sure they happened. I don't know what they offered him that maybe Dwayne Wade turned down or what Dwayne Wade asked for that they just weren't willing to give him. I don't know exactly how it went down. This is what I will say. If Dwayne Wade approached them and said he wanted to be part of ownership, that he wanted to be part of, you know, the team, the leadership, and they told him no, then I would have been upset. It seemed like it was just a disagreement from everything that's been floated out there. So for me, it's Dwayne Wade wanted to be in that role. Utah was the place that was giving him the opportunity to exert the power that he wanted. Add on top of that, the fact that he's going to have obligations in LA with his game show, The Cube, which I haven't watched, but honestly looks like a lot of fun to be on. I haven't like I watched was, it either, but I'm hyped to do that. 
I would love to be on that show. Like I would love to be on that. I would love to be on American Ninja Warrior, although I'd be terrible. Wipe out that show. Wipe out would be a lot of fun, although it would be painful. All those shows look like a great time. But um, I just look, I wish Dwayne nothing but the best of luck. And I just think everybody that feels a certain type of way about him or a certain type of way about, you know, the city, uh, Salt Lake City or the Utah Jazz. You really I, I don't I don't understand why. I really don't get why. To me, it just reminded me kind of of the situation of when he ended up on the Bulls. Um, And I don't know what the kind of, you know, miscommunication would have been in terms of his role thereafter. And again, to your point, we don't know. We don't know if he wanted ownership. We don't know if they offered him a more front office position and he wanted ownership instead. I, I'm not, you know, I this is all speculation from my end. But when I first kind of heard what had happened um, and, you know, I think Mickey Arison even tweeted something out about it. It just gave me kind of PTSD back to when Wade left Miami for Chicago. Um, And so I just wish it could have worked out differently to your point. I definitely don't hold anything against him. Um, I will forever love Dwayne Wade. Actually, the other day I was asked who my favorite player was in the league currently. And again, and I've talked about this, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around the fact that Wade's not in the league anymore. Um, and I automatically was just like, Oh, Wade. And it's just, it's one of those things that I'm, I'm never going to hold anything against him and I'm forever going to love him. And he will forever be one of my top players. Um, I just still wish that he could have kind of continued on with Miami. It feels weird seeing him in the hat, right? When he has that jazz hat on, mm-hmm. it's got the little note and stuff. And I'm like, Oof, that just feels wrong. Right now, it could feel more wrong. Like if you had told me that he had joined like a Mavericks ownership group Mm -hmm. or the Lakers, Knicks, Celtics, Philadelphia, Indiana. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have some issues. All the other teams in the league, the Jazz are the only ones that you wouldn't have a problem with. No, I wouldn't have had a problem with the Jazz, the Trailblazers, the like teams that don't really mean anything against the Miami Mm -hmm. Heat. Right, Uh, the Nuggets they beat us literally every time we play in Denver think this was recently was the first time in years or something like that but like there, there are teams that i just don't feel a certain type of way towards mm-hmm. and utah is one of them to me my thought process with with uh utah and now that i'm thinking about this you want to know something if utah won the championship which i don't think they will but if utah won the championship sons are taking it you i'd be happy here first. yeah but i but i'd be happy for Dwayne. like good for you man you want it as a player you've now won it in an ownership group all he needs to do next is go be an assistant coach somewhere then be a head coach. He could be like a Steve Nash, right? Like he could be the head coach. Okay. But let's not pretend that if the jazz win a championship this year, he had much to do with that. I no. love the man, but that is giving him way too much credit in quite short of a time. I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't feel bad about it at all. I'm just like, do what you got to do. And I think honestly, considering how much power he wanted to have an ownership in team say, because it looks like that was very important to him. And I mm-hmm. respect him for that. I am not sure this was going to be the place for him because heat culture, heat leadership, the way, you know, we kind of do things. It's very established. It's there. You kind of know how it is. You're just kind of following the same handbook that's been passed down from Pat Riley to literally every other person that's been here. So honestly, I feel like it would have been constricting towards him. And so he decided to go elsewhere. Maybe that, that that's what I thought about it. No, I understand that. And, you know, we touched upon this earlier, but James Jones with the Suns, no one felt some sort of way there. And obviously there's no comparison between James Jones and Dwayne Wade. But at the end of the day, it is a business. Um, And I think to your point, it's not like they went to a rivalry. Um, I'm definitely not as neutral on it as you are. But again, it's more just I wish it was with Miami. Sure. And it would have been even better to see him in like the seats next to and Alonzo morning, mm-hmm. you know, just like him, Alonzo, Shane Battier, just kind of mm-hmm. sitting, watching the game, kind of getting, making sure that the team knows exactly what they're doing, but it was unfortunate. It didn't happen. I just, I, I just, to me, man, I'd leave that door open mm-hmm. at all times. If he was ever like, I want to, I want to jump ship. Listen, I'd open that door to him immediately. Now question, he's still doing his TNT stuff, right? Like his TNT NBA analysis and everything or no? That's a good question. I don't know if he got re-signed for next season. Well, because I like, I, I'll be honest. I like never watch TNT because I don't think their coverage is very good. Oh, I find than... them fun. 
Uh, I mean, I like the little like things I see on the internet when somebody makes fun of Charles Barkley or when Shaq races. Yeah, you know? like I'm not necessarily in on their analysis, but it's just kind of all the other stuff that cracks me up. Because I'd be interested to see. I, I feel like he was on something recently because it'd be interesting to see if that was possible, considering that he now has like an ownership stake in a team. So then yeah, I don't he, know if that would be a no conflict of interest or not. Oh, I mean, it would have to be. What is he? Well, he's going to go on there and then they're going to say, what did you think about the Jazz's performance tonight? But when wait, they lost by Draymond 30? Green is a guest on there all the time. Well, yeah, but I, I think it's different with like ownership. Draymond doesn't have any ownership in anything. No, but I'm saying, don't you think a current player would be more biased? Mm, no, not really. Because like it's it like one is like you're a player for the team and then you can probably go elsewhere. And I mean, they're paying your contract. It's a little, the other one is like, you're the ownership for that team. Like you are the face of that team because everybody else is there under contract. You are there. Like, I don't know. It's just different. I don't know. I yeah. Think. I find them both problematic. And actually every time Draymond's on there, I, I check myself. Like, I'm like, how is this okay? Like you're clearly going to have, opinions on players based on who you don't get along with currently so i find that weird um but that's a good question i wasn't chris bosh signed to next season oh i think he was man so we he may have taken wade's this. spot you think he took wade's spot that would be very poetic and and a beautiful way to close out wade's run with tnt well yeah that probably would have been good i don't actually know exactly what it is one thing though, and here, you know what? Super random tangent, but it's because I just saw the trailer yesterday and it was really fun for me. Space Jam, a new legacy. Very excited for that. I am too, but I feel like everyone's already already hating and I can't really sing its praises well, because okay. I'm in the minority. I will say this. I don't think it is going to be anywhere near as good as the Absolutely original. not. And to be honest, I actually wish they didn't make it. I think this was a huge mistake on their part. I'm still excited to watch it, but if I had to say, I wouldn't have done it. I feel like LeBron should have tried to do something else. Mm -hmm. He was in that, in that comedy, in that rom-com. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I thought he did pretty well in that. Granted, it was mo mostly because Bill Hader is a really good actor. And I think he's hilarious. But I think LeBron really should have tried to do other things mm -hmm. to pull himself further and further away from the Michael Jordan comparisons that have been following him since high school that he won't let go of. And he well, LeBron is eating it up. So at the same time, I'm not shocked that he did that. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It, already, some of his acting in the trailer looks very questionable. Oh, the whole thing is going to be super sus. I'm just excited because it's Space Jam. Let's be honest. I'm not like Michael Jordan's acting was much better in Space Jam. Crickets. What? You thought his acting was I can't was good? go against Michael Jordan. Anything that man does, bow down anything oh you know what actually he's probably going to listen to this podcast and take it personally now that i've said that i so met him like, at his steakhouse and i almost fainted like i i actually had to hold on to the staircase banister because i was like pull yourself together like michael jordan is literally in front of you were you in a bush outside of the steakhouse and then you went I was in knowing michael jordan was there at the steakhouse with an ex-boyfriend for my birthday we were walking down the stairs wow and an ex-boyfriend took you to a steakhouse for your birthday? He did. But you were dating at the time. We were. Okay, so okay, so a current ex-boyfriend. Because you said ex-boyfriend. I thought you guys were broken up at the time. The, at the time. Oof, a that guy's putting out a lot of money for somebody that y'all broke up. We but could I now be on good understand. terms. You don't know. You would go to a steakhouse with an ex on your birthday? No, not for my birthday. Exactly. Anyway, there he was at the bottom of the staircase and his bodyguard was there. And I kind of looked at him like in a way to gesture, like, can I come closer? Because it's Michael Jordan and I'm going to freak the fuck out. And he was like, yeah, come here, whatever. And of course, like my ex was like, oh, it's her birthday. I, I literally thought I was going to die. It was Did you get a picture with him. Moment. No, they said no pictures because he was um, I think he was with his wife. And they had just gotten there to go because there's like a private back room and I caught them on the way. But I was like, I don't I don't even need anything except this moment ingrained in my mind forever. Did you say the food hand? was freaking bomb too? no one cares about the food you had at the restaurant? I'm where just you were, saying where you it was Jordan. very no good. Cares. I had no chicken because I don't eat red meat, but I'm sure the steak was delicious. 
now you've said everybody, right? Like nobody wanted to hear about the food at the steakhouse you in which you met Michael Jordan. Hear? Do you guys like that Michael's speaking on your behalf? Tweet me and let me know. If you get more than two tweets, I'll be shocked. Literally two. About this steakhouse and specifically the restaurant. Like what the chicken was like. No one cares. Did you shake Michael Jordan's hand? No, we met. We, we like, it was like a... Like a hello from like okay. No one away. else saw this because my ex boyfriend did. Would you like me to call? No, him no, no. Up? But hold on. But your hand wave just now was like the most awkward hand wave ever. So like you I did told like you, awkward... I almost fainted when I was walking down the stairs. I held on to the banister. He was yeah. in a lime green shirt, like a I, lime green button down. I it held was my shit together when I met Dwayne Wade. This is Michael Jordan. You want to know something? To me. Dwayne Wade means more. I'm not saying Dwayne Wade is a better player. I, I, under, Dwayne I Wade can has understand a that. Greater legacy or whatever. But to me, Dwayne Wade means just so much more. I, I didn't even really get to watch much of Michael play outside of his Wizards days. And that was not peak. Jordan. Please tell me you watched The Last Dance, though. Of course I watched The Last Dance. Did you okay. not get my he took a personal reference? I didn't even hear you say that. No, oh, Mike. You know what? R- just wrap it up. Just wrap it up. I think we're nearing the end. We have so much too that we have to cover on Thursday that we should just, just zip. let's just wrap it up. Speaking of Thursday, as Michael said earlier in the episode, we will be live streaming at 830 Eastern time. So come hang out with us. We might do a fun little Q and A or ask for questions beforehand. We'll see what goes down on Thursday, but regardless, we appreciate you listening and we'll see you then. Thanks for listening to Feel the Heat. Can't get enough of your hosts? Follow Alana at at Alana Tahauer, T-A-C-H-A-U-E-R, and Michael at Michael, the number five RSN, on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe.